In this final video, I'm going to do my best to try to sum up the major ideas of the course and leave you with a few concluding comments. Uh, first, it should be apparent to you by now that sickness and healing are not strictly biological slash physiological phenomena. Because after all, we've seen examples of that not being the case. You may recall our discussion of Native Africans under apartheid. The general quality of health for them was greatly diminished and reduced as a result of the discriminatory practices of apartheid. So that would be a strictly socio-cultural factor affecting sickness. We also discussed a study that showed that people with higher social indexes as they age tend to be healthier than those with lower social indexes. Also too we've come across the placebo effect, a strictly psychological phenomenon, demon possession, which apparently has no physiological basis whatsoever. So anyway, the basic point there being that sickness and healing are not strictly biological slash physiological phenomena, but in fact are quite cultural and often guided and influenced by cultural ideology. Second major point, if we examine all of the medical systems that exist today in the world, all of the ideologies of sickness and healing, etc., that we find in the world today, I think we can certainly conclude with a high degree of confidence that biomedicine is the most acultural in other words, not having anything to do with culture. So biomedicine is the most acultural and empirical form of healing or understanding of healing and sickness and actually should be our general model in the world today for that reason. After all, the scientific basis of biomedicine encourages us to test current methods of healing continue to explore, basically just apply the scientific method to healing and sickness, thereby fine-tuning our understanding of healing and sickness. So I think that it would be safe to say that we should probably use that as our general model for healing and sickness, while not, of course, ignoring all of the many cultural aspects that influence sickness and healing. Thirdly, in regard to psychotherapeutic healing, we can see that this is a major issue in regard to ethnomedicine. We've seen this issue come up in regard to the placebo effect, exorcism, faith healing, shamanic healing, etc. And we've also seen that without confidence in the healer and the healing system and the healing ideology, psychotherapeutic healing is not going to occur. And in fact, that directly helps us understand the placebo effect, which, if you recall, differs from place to place. In regard to exorcism, it appears as though the reason why exorcism always works, regardless of the cultural setting, is because, in fact, these individuals are not possessed by any sort of demon, but rather think they are, and then, once the healing ceremony is done, think they've been healed or think they've been released from the clutches of some demonic influence. So, an overt, salient example of psychotherapeutic healing. And then in regard to faith healing, again, it seems as though people are perhaps experiencing some sort of relief from their condition, but certainly one would be hard-pressed to empirically establish the fact that actual healing occurs through prayer. On the other hand, people certainly do seem to experience some sort of relief and some sort of release, and that is why, in fact, we refer to this as psychotherapeutic healing as opposed to therapeutic healing. In regard to culture-bound syndromes, and remember the definition of that would be a sickness or malady that is uh, specifically endemic to one 
particular geographical area, as if others are not affected by this condition. Well, given that strict definition, culture-bound syndromes do not exist. We're all homo sapiens. We're 99.9% .9 genetically identical around the world. Clearly, we all suffer from the same pathogens in, in the same way, etc. Now, of course, we can't dispute the fact that we may think of these issues in different ways. And that, of course, could affect our experience of sickness. So in regard to that issue, yes, we might say something like a culture-bound syndrome exists, uh, but clearly we've seen that once a culture-bound syndrome, quote-unquote, is identified, it doesn't take long before people begin recognizing the same symptoms in other places, and suddenly what was a culture-bound syndrome becomes more universal. And then finally, I'll leave you with a, an anecdote from my field work. I spent two years in Trinidad. Most of that time I spent working with Leader Scott. Leader is a religious title. Uh, he was a, a respected elder in the African religion, the Orisha religion, practiced there, and he was also a recognized healer. And for many, many months I worked beside him as he treated people for a variety of maladies. Well, uh, Leader Scott was quite good at recognizing mundane treatable illnesses and as soon as he determined that, that was the case he would send them to the clinic. So if he determined someone had diabetes and needed treatment or uh, someone was suffering from hypertension or whatever he would send them to the clinic to receive treatment. On the other hand there were illnesses in which people just needed uh, some love and some care and some compassion. In other words, there was nothing really physiologically wrong with them, but they just needed some hope. And Leader Scott recognized that and would do the proper rituals, uh, attempting to bring about healing in the patient. But then there were also certain maladies, certain spiritual maladies, that Leader Scott thought that he could actually heal. And that would sort of get us into the realm of psychotherapeutic healing. Actually, the last, the last form of healing would be psychotherapeutic as well, but in, in that case, there was really nothing wrong with the individual. In this case, I'm talking about here, Leader Scott would often diagnose the person as suffering from some sort of spiritual malady and then do the proper ritual and so forth and uh, was quite successful in his healing. So ethnomedicine certainly has something to, to give us. Some, it would, certainly, we can learn from ethnomedicine. After all, I did read somewhere where about 25% of the pharmaceuticals are used today are synthesized versions of herbal medicines that were discovered in indigenous context. And there are practices that were once considered ethnomedical practices that are popular today, for example, acupuncture. So we certainly have a lot to learn from the world of ethnomedicine.